Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College School podcast. Damian and Nick here will be doing our preview and prediction for Notre Dame versus USC. The big time ranked matchup here. Non-conference showdown to cap off the regular season. Five and a half point line in favor of the Trojans. 62 and a half is the over under. 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on ABC. The Trojans get the primetime nod. In the Coliseum in Los Angeles, Notre Dame leads the all-time series 48-36 to 5, and they've won four straight. Look at this Notre Dame offense, Nick. It's kind of an interesting unit because they're quietly performing pretty well, even though they probably shouldn't be. You know, 31 points per game. This offensive line has really kicked in the gear, and they've been running the ball very well over the past month or so. But the passing game hasn't exactly, you know, followed. You know, five of the last six games, they've completed under 53%. Uh, as a team, which would be Drew Pine at quarterback. He's averaging 170 yards per game, 1,700 yards on the year, 62% comp rate on the season for him, 19 touchdowns, only five interceptions. But you look at games like Clemson, only 85 yards, 116 against Syracuse. They were very resilient against Navy and put up 269 and four touchdowns. That's the only bright spot from this passing game since I'd say October the 15th when they played Stanford. You know, it's been a very bumpy road for this passing attack. The running game, though, has came full circle, running behind a phenomenal offensive line that's starting to move the pile and be physical. Audric Estemi, 782 and 11 touchdowns for him. They're coming in to play USC, and this is an offense this year that has shown one thing, and that one thing would be that they love to get in shootouts with their opponents. I just don't think Notre Dame can outlast the Trojans, especially on the road here in a shootout with how one-dimensional I believe this offense is. It truly is a one-dimensional offense. There's no, you know, it's nothing against Drew Pine because you know the, the touchdown interception rate is not terrible for him. You know, with the 19 touchdowns to the five interceptions, please present at 60 percent. But it really is just a running back heavy team, and they're really running the ball and it's really bailing them out here. You know, picking up a lot of ground game. You know, the you know 191 yards on the ground per game. You know, 220 in the last four of the f- four of the last five games. You know, S team has you know he's really been picking up with the 780. Two yards plus the 11 touchdowns from the season. The completion rate is just poor for this team. And when you play a team like USC that you know is going to put points on the board, they're going to absolutely gunsling you this weekend. I mean, we saw it last weekend against UCLA. They put a ton of points up on the board. This this USC team you know, isn't shy about scoring a lot of points. You know, they scored 48 on Saturday, 55 against Colorado, 41 against Cal, 45 against Arizona. This team's going to put up points. I just don't know if this Notre Dame deep offense has enough potential to keep up with that high fly offense doesn't seem like they have enough firepower you know Michael Mayer leads the team in everything 59 grabs 711 yards seven touchdowns after that it's Lorenzo Styles who's not really been able to emerge this year only 26 grabs 306 yards I mean less than 30 yards per game Jane Thomas only has 18 grabs Braden Lindsay only 19 and then Chris Tyree has 20 other than that no one else really catches passes for them this passing attack's not versatile at all neither is this offense but one thing going for them though is they are playing a defense it's not really good against the run and like you said they've been piling it up the last couple games 220 plus yards in four of the last five it's pretty uncharacteristic this team gets stonewalled against navy only 66 yards rushing in that game very strange because they had 263 against a very good clemson front the week prior uh you know that's just one outlier out of the last month or so but that's very interesting kind of concerning nick to see that kind of inconsistency from an offense uh, from a week-to-week basis to do that against Clemson and then turn around and be poor against Navy. That game against Navy for Notre Dame was so bizarre. You know, Navy really is just going to run the ball at you, and they were able to put 32 points up on the board against against Notre Dame. You know, maybe Navy's a little bit better than we think they are considering they beat UCF this past weekend, but Notre Dame's struggles against Navy kind of concern me getting ready for this matchup. I, You know, they did blow out BC this weekend, but, you know, BC's not really a great team this year. Just weird to look at the schedule, you know, they put 35 points up on Clemson, gave up 14. They put 35 points up on Navy, gave up 32. Just a weird outlying game. They weren't really able to run the ball like they wanted to. 6-6 total yards on the ground. It's just not enough considering how run-heavy this offense is. They're lucky they got out against Navy with a win. They have to be able to pick up a lot of points, a lot of ground yards this week if they're going to even have a chance of beating USC. they got to put, put a ton of ground gain, pick up yards, you know, first down, want to get five yards on first down on the ground if they want to have any success against USC. And that would, you know, that's the formula of winning. Just keep them, you play keep away, run the ball hard. And that's something Notre Dame can certainly do, especially with Joe Alt leading the way at left tackle. Very good offensive front for the Irish moving forward to that USC offense. Uh, you know, the last two games, it's been a bit of a bumpy start for this SC offense in the first quarter. They only had two points against Colorado. Uh, I think they only had seven in the first quarter against UCLA. And then they just, you know, caught a breeze. You know, it was looking bad for USC. They're down 14 nothing early after a Caleb Williams pick. And then he caught fire, you know, the rest of the game. Ended up with 500-plus total yards. He was slinging all over the place. Their first punt didn't come until that final drive. 
where UCLA had recorded a sack and they had an opportunity to go down and win the game. 65% completion ratio for Williams. Turner, 3,480 yards, 33 touchdowns, only three picks, 316 and seven touchdowns rushing. Uh, you know, somebody asked me who I thought was the most talented quarterback this year. And, you know, I'm a USC fan, of course, but I wasn't being biased when I thought it was Caleb Williams. What he's been able to showcase this year, you know, and last year, of course, also, you know, his ability to be a magician in the pocket, uh, his ability to throw on the run with ease. I mean, the power he possesses while running, it's highly impressive. Uh, you know, he's just the ultimate difference maker. He's right now at the forefront of the Heisman after that big game. And you look at his weapon, you know, Jordan Adson's back to being healthy, 765 and eight touchdowns of a team high, 51 receptions. 36 grabs and 549 and four scores for Taj Washington. Who has plenty of speed. Dynamic slot weapon in the Mario Williams. Brennan Rice, you know, he's got a versatile skill set. And then Kyle Ford's really stepped things up the last couple of weeks. And then Michael Jackson's another guy. They have five different pass catchers this year that have recorded 100 plus yards in a single game. That's, you know, by far the most in college football. You look at Travis Dye departing. That didn't really do much for this offense. You figured it would be a big loss. But Austin Jones filled that role with ease. 455 yards and five scores on the year. 120 of those came on the ground against the Bruins, found the end zone twice, and then he also caught the ball four times for 57 yards. He ran off a lot of authority. You know, they certainly lose, you know, the decisiveness and, you know, the slash and dash type of runner, Travis Dye. Um, but they have speed and relic ground also in Jones. You know, this is a ground game that did not experience any fall off against UCLA, Nick. Um, you know, they're as versatile as it comes. And this part of the football team has certainly lived up to its expectations. This offense has been phenomenal. Losing Travis Dye, we discussed it last week when we did our preview for the UCLA game. We really thought that that would potentially hamper this offense and cause some damage to them. But Austin Jones, to his credit, you know, he showed up. He's going to step up and replace. I like Austin Jones as a running back. You know, he's a solid number two back. Now he's kind of in the in the starting role here. He's going to have to really show up here. You know, had a solid week against UCLA. He had 21 carries, 120 yards, and the two scores this past weekend. Going to need to see out a lot out of him on Saturday. You know, I like what he can do as a back. I like the speed he has. And this wide receiving core, you know, it's a well-rounded group. You know, even when you look at the guys at the bottom, you look at Michael Jackson, the third, Kyle Ford, Brennan Rice. These guys are putting up solid numbers. Ford and Rice have over 300 yards receiving for each of them. They each got two touchdowns. Jackson has three touchdowns as well. Jordan Addison, of course, we know all about him. with his eight total touchdowns this year. Then Taj Washington and Mario Williams are not getting the love that they deserve, in my opinion. They both have over 500 yards receiving, plus four scores for each of them. Austin Jones has a receiving touchdown as well, plus approaching 200 yards receiving for him. He should break that mark this weekend. This offense is high flying. They pack a lot of punch. Caleb Williams, solid quarterback, looks composed in the pocket. You know, 33 touchdowns to three interceptions, 64.9% completion percentage. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. The move to USC has worked out great for him. He's really kind of blossomed under the system, continuing with Lincoln Riley. I think this offense is fantastic. I think they'll score a lot of points on Saturday, and they'll continue to do so throughout the rest of the season. This interior offensive line has been terrific. Justin Diedrich, Brett Nylon, Andrew Voorhees, three seniors there on the interior. They have been elite for the Trojans. They have allowed 21 sacks this year. The offensive front has. The number could probably be a lot more if it wasn't for the, you know, improvising skills of Caleb Williams. You know, the tackles have struggled a bit there for the Trojans. But on the interior, those guys are three of the best run blockers in the conference. That allows them to push the pile for anybody. Uh, the biggest concern I have for USC is how emotional this game will be because now there's a lot of playoff talk. They seem to be one of the most talked about teams in college football with how exciting they were on Saturday compared to all the other teams and they were above them in the rankings pretty much struggling um, in the you know the emotional game at UCLA they turn around and play another rival here uh, you know this is that's the only concern I have is that the emotion might catch up to USC you know what are your what's your opinion on that Nick and do you think that's going to be a factor in this one against yet another rival I certainly think there is a story to be said with that you know USC hasn't got close to the playoff in the playoff era a team that was so dominant in the early BCS years under Pete Carroll kind of you know has been down for a while, right? They've gone through coaches, you know, Kiffin, Sarkeesian, Clay Helton, right? It's been it's been a rotating door of coaches, and they really just haven't put anything together. This is the first time in a while that USC is back in the top 10 on the national forefront, and this is a real opportunity for them to make the playoffs. I think that the emotions will certainly be running high, but I think this team has just enough sort of composure and experience to kind of guide them through. I worry about the defense a little bit more than I worry about the offense. The offense will keep composed. I just get a little concerned about the defense due to the experience on that defense. But this USC team, you know, they deserve to be in the conversation for the playoff. If they have one loss, they win the Pac-12. They have to be in the playoff for me, and I think that they, they have a big win on Saturday that could certainly cement their case. They certainly hear that noise looking at this Notre Dame defense. It's going to try to solve the riddle of the SC offense. For the most part, it's been a really good unit. 20 points per game allowed, 317 yards per contest given up. Back in week one, they gave up only 21 to Ohio State. 
Uh, and, you know, the last few weeks, I think these numbers might be kind of skewed. You know, I look at the Clemson game, they only forced two turnovers. They blocked a punt. You know, the defense did everything for them in that game. Um, but overall, this is just a big change of pace considering since the 15th of October who they've played. They played Stanford, UNLV, Syracuse. Uh, you know, UNLV has some solid individual players. They lost to a Stanford team that's not good on offense one bit. Syracuse, a one-dimensional offense. Clemson, you know, a very wishy-washy type of offense, it seems. Navy. All they do is run the ball at you in Boston College. They don't have an offense one bit, and they just shut them out. This is a defense that I think has been playing very good football, and I do think it is a good unit. I love the depth they have on their defensive line. Guys like Riley Mills, uh, Howard Cross, uh, Justin and Jason Edimiola. Uh, this is a very good football team. 11 TFLs for Isaiah Foskey, JT Bertrand, Jack Kaiser, two really good tacklers in the middle for them. And then I think, you know, the secondary has played very good as well. Brandon Joseph, he's day-to-day right now with an injury. You know, I t- anticipate he'll play in this one. Uh, you, know, you know, Clarence Lewis has played very good on the outside for them. Cam hurt been solid. You know, these are some guys that have really stepped up for this football team. And then, you know, we have things off. Benjamin Morris and a freshman has five interceptions this year for three pass breakups. The biggest concern, though, is they have been playing these quite poor offenses for the last month. And now they're going to turn around and face this highly explosive offense. It's probably the nation's best. The last time they played one like that was back in week four when they played North Carolina. They won that game because the UNC defense doesn't have much of a pulse. But Drake May was having a field day, 300 plus yards and five touchdowns. That's the best comparison you can have. Uh, but I think USC far in a way has much more talent than North Carolina does. So I'm kind of concerned about how this defense will play because this is going to be a culture shock of sorts, I think, coming into L.A. here, considering who they played, Nick, the last couple games, you know, the last six weeks or so. The mentality has to be bend, don't break for Notre Dame. They're, have to, they're going to have to hold USC to field goals, you know, force punts, that type of thing. You know, giving up three points a lot better than giving up seven points for this Notre Dame team if they want to be able to keep this contest tight. I like this defense, but I, I agree. Looking at the teams they've played, the sample size, comparing the numbers, it's just they're not playing great offenses to get a real true value of the sample size. J.D. Bertrand and Jack Kaiser, two linebackers, you know, leading team in tackles. Kaiser with 50, Bertrand with 65. They each they have total four and a half sacks between the two of them. Foskey having a great year, nine and a half sacks for him, and the, and the 40 ta- tackles total for him. You know, Morrison, that freshman, has really stepped in the five interceptions, plus 27 total tackles. Joseph, as long as he's healthy to play, he's got 27 tackles as well, plus another interception to boot. DJ Brown, another guy I look at, you know, he's having a quiet, good season at safety, 40 total tackles. Doesn't have any picks, really lacking the pass breakups, but, you know, 40 total tackles for him at safety is not bad for DJ Brown. Cam Hart, another guy that's great. Clarence Lewis as well. It's not a bad defense by any means, but I just think that they don't have the great sample size to compare it to. UNC is the best option that we have to compare it to with Drake May. But I think, you know, right now I'd take Caleb Williams over Drake May in terms of the talent. And I think the weapons that Caleb Williams has are certainly better than the weapons Drake May has. So I could see this USC offense putting a ton of points up on Saturday. And it's just, for me, if Notre Dame wants to have a chance this game, it's bend, don't break. Got to hold them to field goals, three and outs, things like that if they want to have a chance. The strategy week one against Ohio State was sit in cover two the whole game. That worked for the most part. They came out of cover two and got burnt. So they're going to want to do that. You know, uh, Freeman, he loves to play man coverage press. You know, that's not really going to be a good idea in this game, I don't think. So I think you're going to see a lot of cover two. You're going to look for that pass rush to get after it. They've had exactly four sacks in four of the last five games. So this pass rush, they're going to have to get cooking in this one. That's really going to be a big part of this defense can figure things out. Looking at the USC defense, you know, a lot of people picked UCLA to win that game on Saturday, mainly due to five turnovers in the last five games for this defense. Because early on in the year, they, you know, three games, uh, three of the first four games, they had four turnovers each in, you know, they had five over the last five games going into the rivalry game against the Bruins. And they were able to force four turnovers. You know, people kept saying the turnovers were drying up, this and that. Forced three picks. They had a fumble. And that final pick, uh, you know, it was a great play called by, you know, by the defensive coordinator to drop. Uh, you know, Alex Grinch dropped Corey Foreman into coverage and DTR did not see him and he picked it off to seal the game when they were driving downfield. Uh, you know, so they proved them wrong there. You know, the turnover margin for those football teams is insane. It sits at a number of 20. They keep the football. They have 24 total takeaways. And they've only given it away four times this year. Three picks, one fumble. This defense, they're good in the red zone. They force turnovers. That's about it, though. They give up a lot of yards. Uh, you know, they'll give up a good bit of points. Eric Gentry, he's been out. They hope to have him back, especially trying to go up against Michael Mayer. Shane Lee has the speed to cover against tight ends, but he's had a number of missed tackles. Uh, he is the leading tackler with 65 stops. Makai Blackman, he's an elite corner for them. And Tua Pelotu, 38 tackles. 19 of them tackle for losses, 11 and a half sacks. 
two forced fumbles. There's a handful of great individual players, like some of the guys that just rattled off. And I like Caitlin Bullock as well. Another ball hawking safety with four picks, four pass breakups. I think SC will have the speed in the back end not to get burned by this passing attack. But do they have what it takes to stop the Notre Dame running game? Because that's what it's going to come down to. If Notre Dame's pounding the rock, uh, you know, a lot, you know, like they've been doing, you know, 250 yards per game or whatever the number is over the last four out of five. If they're doing that in this game, Nick, I think they have a pretty good shot of coming into L.A. and winning this game. I agree. You know, if they're able to run against this defense and give them nightmares all day long, then they have a chance here. You know, I like this defense. You know, I don't think it's a great defense, but I also think it's gotten better over the last few weeks and it's started to impress me a little bit. You know, Shane Lee leading the way, 65 total tackles for him, plus the two and a half sacks and the two interceptions. Great leader. You know, you want to have, if you have Eric Gentry, Gentry back, you know, that's another big gain. He is 52 total tackles in the season so far in the interception for him. Those two would be very important to stop the run for me. You know, I also think they just got to be good after the run early, shut down those running holes, plug those holes. You know, I want to see Tulu. You want to see Tui Pulu too. You know, get after the quarterback. You know, stop the run in the backfield. He has 11 and a half sacks so far this season, plus the 19 tackles for loss. If he can kind of get those big tackles for loss early on and stonewall this running attack for Notre Dame, I think USC will have a good chance to just put a ton of points on the board and create distance for them and force Notre Dame to pass the ball, which is really not something they're comfortable with. If Notre Dame has to play catch up because this USC defense is playing solid early on. I think that's the key for USC just to run away with this one. I think Alex Grinch might look to opt, you know, he might opt to load up the box a little bit more in this one because Notre Dame does not possess that, you know, you know, lingering threat of downfield passing attack. Uh, look at these team comparisons, though. Quarterback, the edge goes to USC. Caleb Williams over Drew Pine. That's pretty easy. Running back, USC. I think Austin Jones and Relic Brown. It's a very good duo for them. Austin Esmick for Notre Dame has really emerged for them. Chris Tyree has been pretty absent. I haven't heard his name much at all this year. Wide receiver, pretty unanimous there as well. I mean, the, Michael Mayer is the only real pass catcher they have for the for the football team of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. They don't really have much. Lorenzo Styles, he's a talented player, hasn't really produced much though. Offensive line, I love the interior O line of USC, but I think uh, you know together as a five man starting unit, the Irish get the edge there. Defensive line, I'm gonna give it to Notre Dame just because of the depth. Tui to to a below two though, he is obviously a phenomenal individual player. Linebacker, I'm gonna give the edge to Notre Dame there. They have some phenomenal tacklers. JT Bertrand's a great leader for them. Secondary, Notre Dame secondary has played good, but again, I think those numbers are very skewed. I think they're going to have a headache in this game, even though the sample size against Ohio State would say otherwise. I think this is going to be a tough game for them because the last, you know, how many ever games it's been over the last plus month, not good at all in USC. They force a lot of interceptions. They may give up a lot of yards, but they do have a great individual player, Makai Blackman. And again, Nick, uh, I believe they actually lead the nation in interceptions. So got any problem with these team comparisons? If so, where do you think Notre Dame might have a bigger edge than I'm pointing out? Personally, this is pretty solid. You know, I think the running back's a little bit closer than some people expect. I really think that the way that they're able to run the ball at Notre Dame is a solid kind of comparison for that. But in general, I think this is very spot on analysis. I like these sort of matchups. You know, clearly the quarterback is definitely the better option for USC. I think that's a very easy one to say. But if I had to pick one that I disagree on, I'd say running back just because I think that there is enough variety with the Notre Dame and their and their lead back is just enough talent to kind of push that for me. But in general, these are pretty solid comparisons. Logan Diggs has stepped up as well. He has almost 700 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, so, you know, I can understand that. They, they, do, they do have a three deep at running back there. Moving to the final thoughts and the prediction on this one. You know, keys of the game, I think, for Notre Dame. Get pressure and keep contained on Williams. He's just a heck of a magician. He impresses every time he's pressured. And he's forced to escape and to protect the football because USC, they love to steal those extra possessions, and they seem to cash in a good bit of the time. I think for USC, don't get bullied by the Irish rushing attack, especially if you have playoff aspirations. Uh, you're likely going to be playing Georgia or Michigan in the playoff, and you don't want to play, you know, even maybe Ohio State. You know, any of the teams you're going to see in the playoff, they're going to want to pound the Brock just like Notre Dame will, and they're better than Notre Dame at doing that. So you want to showcase you have some physicality, impress the committee, stress the Notre Dame secondary. Like I said, the last few weeks they've been playing passing attacks like Boston College, Syracuse, you know. This is going to be a big-time test. This is really going to be a culture shock for them. I'm a USC fan, so Nick, you went ahead with a prediction on this one. What are your thoughts on this matchup, and who do you got going with the victory? I'm taking USC this week, 38-27. I just think that there's far too much talent on this USC offense. I think they're going to find themselves in a lead early on, and Notre Dame's going to have to play catch-up and just kind of get uncomfortable, get out of the rhythm on offense, and have to start throwing the ball, which is really something that Notre Dame doesn't want to do. And I think that the USC offense just has too much talent, too many different weapons for the Notre Dame defense to keep an eye on. I think they'll be able to spread it out. If one option doesn't work, they'll be able to flip it out to somebody else. I think USC just has enough effort here to put up 38 total points, which is honestly a bit low for, no, for for USC considering how many points they put up over the last couple of weeks. But I think 38 is going to be the total for them this weekend. They're going to beat Notre Dame and find themselves in a great position to get in the playoff. 
definitely fair to say that Notre Dame got their fair share of, of uh, stops. I think, you know, they earned their respect all the way back in week one against a very powerful offense at Ohio State. But it was also on the road, so that's certainly a respectable thing to say. Should be a great game here. Playoff, you know, the playoff aspirations might get to the Trojans' head, but I don't see it here in this one. I think they'll go ahead and be able to pull away with their offense. Uh, but it should be a good one. I do think the Notre Dame uh, running attack will be see that. It'll be fun to see how they match up. Uh, you know, in the trenches against the Irish. It's me for today's episode. As always, guys, appreciate you tuning in. Nick, I appreciate you joining me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited for this matchup. You know, it's great that USC is back in the national spotlight. You know, college football is better when the Trojans are involved in the playoff hunt. It's a very exciting game against a rival in Notre Dame, a classic robbery. It's me for today's episode, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.